Welcome to Church View version 5.5. In this video, we are going to do some training on the queue list as well as the scriptures, and I will show you some uh, tips to make your life a little bit easier while working with this. Um, what we're going to do first, of course, is we need to find a scripture. So I'm going to double click here to select, and we're going to go to Matthew, tab between. So Matthew chapter 5, tab, uh, verse 24, tab. Now I have find highlighted, but I can click on that as well. Here we are. I'm going to go to my fade transition. So we have some shortcuts set up for fade and sliding. And I'm going to add this to our cue list. So there we are. We have our verse added. Now this covers multiple verses. So I'm going to hit my dash 3, 4, because that's what we want to read, and save that. And as you can see, our title at the top has changed. Now, next one is 1 Samuel. So again, I can go hit my 1 space, and you see the list before you here. We can use the mouse to select if we want. And we're going to 17 and 23 spacebar. So there's our verse. We're going to add that in. And one more we're going to add, which is Philippians 4. Now let's say they we uh, type something wrong here and type down 45 and then hit find. We're going to get another a message that tells us the verse number for Philippians is too high. When we hit OK, it brings us to the last verse of Philippians, so we can find out exactly how many verses there are in this chapter. And in this case, we want to go to actually verse 13. And there we are. I'm going to add that. And last one in our list is Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Again, spacebar to select add this over and again I'm going to edit our title here and put in a dash 10 so that we have the range and also I guess it would be nice if we put in a title for the series that we're working on today so I'm going to hit my new button over here and I'm going to put type in the title actually as part of the queue text and it is ain't no one gonna Hinder me and save. I'm going to increase the font size on that to 16. Hit save again. Now, as you can see, we have our font sizes uh, changing between our scripture verses and the title. Also, be nice if the title was first, wouldn't it? So, we're going to click over here to select the line and drag up. You can see the green highlight as to where we're going to drop it. We'll do that one more time here. And there it is. So one of the ways that you can rearrange text is by clicking and dragging. You can also use the minus sign on the numeric keyboard or the plus sign to bring down. And that's a very quick and easy way to resort your list. So we have our list all prepared here, but as you can see it's kind of plain. We just have the blue background and it would be nice to have a bit of color on it. So we're going to go and go into the file, setup, and background graphics because again that's what we're changing here is the background graphic for the queue list. As we pull that up, queue list is already selected here. I'm going to hit my browse button which pulls out some pictures. We'll just pick this rainbow over lake, open, and there it is. It shows us the picture size underneath as well. You will want to use a picture size that is at least 640 by 480 in size. Anything smaller than that, your text is going to be sized to the graphic and it would uh, appear fuzzy on your screen. Um, so again we want to use a larger graphic if possible. 
The other thing that we notice is that the white text is kind of hard to read a little bit on some parts of this because of the brightness of the graphic. We have a fader control here. We can look at grayscale. Well, I think that makes it a bit worse. I like the color. So let's just click over here and drop down our graphic. Faded a bit, which is perfect. Now I'm going to hit my update button. Close that. And now as I select <coughs> a different uh, queue in our queue list, we can see that we are getting our nice little rainbow over the lake in the graphics. Now, you notice also on top of the queue we have some radio buttons up here. Preview, Prompt, and Live. What happens here is that when we select Preview, and you can see the balloon prompts coming up, we're only going to see the changes when we select different queues on our preview monitor here. <clears throat> and we would have to click on the send in order for it to go to the projector. In prompt mode, if we have a teleprompt available, and when we select our different uh, items in the queue list, on prompt it will be sent out automatically to our teleprompt. This is great not only for uh, a queue list, if you're wanting to queue somebody up on, on the platform, but it also works great if you have um, a play going on and you want to offer them cues on their lines. So you can show them the lines, but the audience doesn't see it, which is great. And of course, on live, when we select different items in the queue list, it's going to go to our live projector so that everyone can see it. But we're just going to stick on the preview right now because that's what we're working with. <clears throat> now, as we select each verse, uh, that works great. And now here on Matthew, uh, we have chap uh, verses 24 to 34. So in order to walk through that, we need to hit the find first so that it's loaded in the queue. The queue is loaded in the scripture. Usually I hit the auto show and then we can walk through the scriptures and it will automatically show on our projector. If auto show is not connected, then when you go to the next verse, you have to manually hit the send. So you'd be going next verse, send, next verse, send in order to walk through. But one thing you notice is that when we went over to the scripture portion, we have a plain background again instead of the nice graphic that we have on the queue list. Hit our find, we lose that. So we need to make these two in sync. Easiest way again to do that is going into the file setup and background graphics. Now in the queue list, which is selected here at the top, we already have our graphic and our fading selected. What we need to do then is copy the settings, go into the scripture where nothing is selected as you can see, now paste the settings and our graphic has come over as well as our fade percentage and now we're going to do the update, close our setup and now when we hit the find button we discover we have exactly the same as uh, graphic that we have on the queue. So that's a great way to, uh, a very simple way to bring the two of them in sync. Now the other thing is that you notice I was usually typing in our scripture. If I want to, uh, if I'm not a good typist, I can use our three-click lookup by clicking on the little arrow here, the triangle. That brings us up the books of the Bible as you can see set in uh, order of the, that they appear in the Bible. So if I need to go to Romans 8 here, I can just click on Romans chapter 8 and I want to go to 33. So there's verse 33 and we're loaded up. Now I just have to, have to hit the send button and that will be sent over to our projector. The other thing is if we were looking at uh, if I was typing in Galatians and I accidentally did uh, chapter 10 verse 40 and then hit find with my spacebar, 
I'm going to get an error here that says the last chapter for Galatians is chapter 6. So that switches us to chapter 6 and also shows us that it's 33 verses there. So again, if I make a mistake and say, well, I want to go to chapter 5, verse 50, and hit find, it tells me that uh, the verse number is too high. And again, we're down on our verse number. It shows us the last. So we do trap that type of an error. <clears throat> also, one of the tricks is that if you are in uh, finished your cue list and they're walking through more scripture, usually what I do is I just type in chapter 7. Oops, let's back us. Chapter 7, tab, verse 8, tab. Now I hit my space bar for find, which loads it up. Now, as you can see, I now have the send key highlighted. So I just hit the space bar, and now it's sent live. Micah, my book, is highlighted. So now if I need to go to Romans, I just need to start typing. Romans, tab, chapter 8, tab, verse 33, tab, space for find, space for send. Back to my book. Now I can go to Mark. And this time I'll just use my down arrow to select, tab. I'm going to chapter 10, tab, verse 46, tab, space for find, space for send, and there it is live. So that's another easy way for doing the loop here. The other one more thing I will show you for dealing with scriptures is that if someone quotes some scripture but can't remember where it comes from, we do have a full scripture search here. So if they were saying, Lord of the Harvest, we just do a search on that. Now, looking at all the words, we find 10 verses. If we match the exact phrase, we see that we have two verses coming up. And double-clicking on the verse will load it into our preview. Uh, also, if we were walking through Luke chapter 10 in this case, we can click on our small Bible here, and that will pull up uh, Luke 10, or sorry, Luke chapter 10, and we have all the verses here. There's a button, as you can see, that highlights the verse, so when we click on the verse, it will automatically go not only to our preview, but also live. If we just want to load it into our preview, then we just have to select on the scripture part and double click, and it goes into our preview window here, but not live. Now, if we were walking through two chapters or two completely different books of the Bible, uh, we can actually, normally, if I just type in, let's go back to Romans 8, for example, and if I hit my lookup, as you can see, we still have just the one window. However, uh, going back to Luke, uh, if I hold my control key down when I hit King James, uh, or the Bible next to King James here that you see, then I pull up a second window. And from these two windows, if we were doing a scripture comparison, I can easily jump back and forth from Luke into Romans, and back into Luke. So it's very easy to jump back and forth between the two verses. Uh, and again, go back to typing if we want. Psalms 3, tab 1, and there it is. Now, if we have uh, Spanish, we can actually pull up a second version of the Bible. In this case, I'll do the Spanish one and say, show second. Now, everything that I do here, we are going to get both the King James Version on the top and the Spanish Version on the bottom. And that also includes uh, hitting my Add button here, it goes over into our uh, queue list for both so that we can uh, easily select uh, build up scriptures based on and as you can see we can do this in any order and we have both English and Spanish in this case and again we can put it onto the ad 
Now this works great, of course, if you have somebody English working through the Bible, but what happens if your main language is Spanish? We have an answer for that as well. Going into the file setup on the multi-screen, we can select which what we wish the uh, books to show up in, either English, Spanish, or German. So I'm going to select Spanish here. And as you can see, Mark has changed to its Spanish equivalent. I can add that in. Still shows up as English at the top. Uh, so I can go back to Romans, chapter 8. Add that over. So now I'm dealing with the Spanish names instead of the English. And going back is just as easy. File, Setup, Multi-Screen. And you can see it says the uh, Spanish equivalent for Romans. I'm going to go back to English. And there we are. Just a quick footnote here on the scripture. As you know, we can pull up a second Bible, in this case Spanish, and we've got the Spanish text on the bottom, but again English at the top, and even if we change to the setup, multi-screen, and then pick Spanish here, we have Spanish in our lookup, but again we don't have Spanish at the top. Very simple way to correct that. What we do is change the top Bible to Spanish, the bottom Bible to King James, and now we have our Spanish title at the top as well as in the Q list. So whatever we change the Bible to on the first one, that's what's going to show for our title. We can also change to the German Bible, and as you can see, that also automatically changes our book look up to German. And again, back to English. And let's say NIV at the bottom. So now we're on English on both. So it will also follow the version of the Bible that you have here. Also, a quick note about the font sizes. As we increase our font size, it increases on the screen, of course, but it will only go so large, and then it won't size any larger because it would be off the screen. So again, normally we have a font size of about 12, which we use, and uh, that works very nice on the top. One thing I want to point out is that if we go to a title here, which is a size 16 font, then go back to, want to go back to Romans 8.16, hit the Find button, Notice that also brings us back to the 12 point. So when you use the find, it will restore the font size that you've had before. If we then choose, say, 14, and hit the next button, it's now actually saving this for font size of 14. So if we go again to the queue list, it goes down to 12, but when we use the find, it will restore what we've used last uh, for the font size here. Also, a special note on the send key. We can use the send key uh, normally. When you just click it, it will send the entire text here to the screen. But you have a few options. So as stated, normally everything is shown on the screen when you click on send. However, if you hold the control key down, you'll be sending only the background, which is great for between verses when they're talking about something. And also if you hold the alt key down, you will see the scripture being shown, which is a great way to tell people where they need to turn in their Bible before you show the actual scripture.